My name is Vahid Chitsa, as part of Elite Mastermind Group. Happy Thanksgiving. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys. My name is Maria Camilla. I am a realtor here in South Florida. I've been a realtor for four years now. Awesome. So let's dive into it. Thank you. How's the weather in Miami right now? Amazing. Amazing. It's like 65, 68 degrees and it's sunny. So it's the perfect weather. <laughs> awesome. It's raining like crazy in LA. So uh, I it just had like two day and a half ago, everything was perfect. So I guess Thanksgiving was, well, we need the rain. So I'm not complaining. I love the rain. California, we definitely need the rain. So let's dive into thinking go rich. When did you start? How did you start? Wow. Uh, with the book. Okay. Um, so I first started with uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is one of the fundamentals, basic books. And towards the end of the book, it talked about your next book being Think and, and Grow Rich. And that's when I started uh, reading it. And a lot of the things that it talked about it resonated with me. And, and it was it was sort of things I was already doing but not as mindful as I should. And after reading the book, it definitely just gave me that that reinforcement of I need to do this, you know, the desire, emotion, becoming reality. So here's my question. Did you read Rich That Poor That because you're in real estate or was it introduced to you by a mentor or a coach? It was introduced to me. Yeah, I did not. I was just getting into real estate. I actually have a bachelor's in criminal justice uh, with a minor in business. Uh, so I was not planning on going into the real estate career when I first started, uh, you know, going to college. That's when I started watch, uh, reading the book. And real estate was not in, in, my, in my mind yet. That's what happens with a lot of uh, agents. They don't. You know, when they come out of school, they don't think that's what they're going to do. But that's the beauty. But you got lucky that you found that at a young age. A lot of individuals don't get to these type of materials and books and content till much later. And that's why a lot of them would have loved it if it would have got introduced to them at a younger age because it would have been a lot. They would have been more powerful in all aspects of their lives. So here is the question for Thinking Gorich. When you read it originally, what would you say the what would you say the top two principles that you're applying your business today are? Hmm. I think um, desire, speaking it into existence. Um, you know, once you connect the desire with the emotion, it just the subconscious and everything is lined up, and you make it happen, right? So that would definitely be the first one, and then the second one would be faith. Because, you know, when you're tired, when you've, because you, you fail, you know, sometimes you fail, you get setbacks, but that's when faith kicks in the faith that, you know, your, your work, as long as you're hustling and as long as you're putting 110%, you're going to get there, right? You're going to get to that goal. You're going to close that deal, close that transaction, get that new client. And that was one of the things at first with real estate for me. So the first year I was like, oh my God, I did so good this year, but I don't think I'm going to find the same clientele next year. What if I don't do good next year? Because we're paid on commission, right? Then the next year would come and we would be, you know, midway uh, through the through the year. And I'm, I'm thinking, what if I, I, I don't find any more clients? And then I would do even better than the year before. And then the following year, this year, I closed a, a, a few big deals and I'm like, I'm not going to have something like this again. And then the next one came and came and I think faith is one of the most important things. So here's my question. In real estate, if, uh, I mean, how are you doing it? Do you have a mentor? Do you have a mastermind group? What are some of the things that you're doing? Because here's what I noticed. In a lot of industries, especially if you're 1099 lifestyle where you work for yourself, a business owner, entrepreneurs, a lot of times, you know, our income depends on our effort that we put in. And my question is, how important is it for individuals, is specifically in real estate, I see the successful ones, they all have their own mastermind group, they all have their own coaching, mentorship, like, I feel like they're working on themselves a lot more than they're working on their business. I think it's more of a self-development process. I, I feel like they're getting paid to develop themselves versus selling commercial business, you know, residential, whatever it is, apartment complexes, whatever the case might be. Is that what you see happening in that industry? 
definitely, definitely. I feel that my, as a real estate agent, as long as you're working on yourself and you're the best that you can be, you work on building the relationships. And that's what I find myself on the most, building that relationship. The customers and the clientele are going to come and you're going to close them. So I, I focus on myself and on building the relationship with the client. I say that every renter turns into a buyer. Um, I build that relationship. I don't, I don't aim to sell. I aim to uh, develop that relationship, that business relationship. And then when they're ready to buy, when they're ready to, to do anything real estate related, they'll know. Maria has always been there for me. She, she doesn't want to just close me. She's there for me when I have the need. Um, as far as mentor, I have, I've had two mentors. My ex-husband was, uh, the person that introduced me to real estate. He's the one that mentored me. Um, and then my business partner now, she was my mentor as well. I would call her at 12 o'clock at night, ask any questions. But again, that was mentoring the real estate side. Like you said, as, as a realtor, you're focusing as well on yourself and personal growth. Um, as long as you focus on personal growth, everything just flows. I agree with that 100%. So when are you going to become a broker? Well, my business partner, I have my business partner. She's the broker. I am a, an associate. I'm planning this year on getting my brokerage license just to become a broker associate. Uh, but I'm not planning on taking my, my, my license anywhere else. We're, we're a team. It's her and I. And I have my own group inside the brokerage um, that, that I work with. And I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, being a broker, way more responsibility. So I understand a lot of ages. But okay, so here's my next question. How much specialized knowledge do you need to have for you to be the top 5% real estate agents in, for example, your area that you're at? So my question is, how much should you be working on your craft? Because in every industry, there are those that make normal money, and then there's those that are leading the industry. They're on top of the, they're part of the elite group. So what does it take and why should you strive to do that? So I think the biggest, the biggest thing is having product knowledge, right? So um, like, as I mentioned before, I was mentored by my business partner. Now I'm mentoring my group. And the biggest thing I tell them is, is having, uh, uh, being aware of the inventory and what's out there. And by doing that, you, you, so I tell them, you know, the first thing you need to do is let's set up some buildings. Let's go see what South Florida has to offer, because then you're 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 able to have conversation, hold a conversation with other people. So um, that that is one of to me uh, the most important things to 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 becoming top of uh, at the top percentage in the field, having product knowledge, building the relationship. That is what's most important. Um, and keeping keeping track of everybody that you meet. Um, when I first started, I got a CRM, and every single person that I met, I put in my CRM. I put a little bit of information about them, and every, I mean, for example, yesterday, my day consisted of sending through my CRM a message to every single person that I know about real estate. You know, thank you so much. I am thankful for uh, being able to represent you in real estate this year. I look forward to blah, 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 and you know, and include their name personally to them. And it's never a sales pitch. I do not sell. I don't sell. I create relationships. I build the relationships and the sales come and the sales come from that. I agree with that a hundred percent. I should do that more often. My list would be way too long. I think it will break the email if I had to send it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I understand what you're saying. And it does make sense because to me, my biggest transactions came not in real estate, but my biggest transactions when it comes to business came in um, from doing small ones that wasn't even worth doing. What I mean by that, the amount of time that I put in that transaction, I was going to make like less than 500 bucks. But that person introduced me to somebody else. Somebody introduced me to somebody else. So building those networks and relationships got me to sit down with some of the most influential people in Los Angeles. And when I do planning with them, a lot of other agents are jealous of it, not in a bad way, in a good way, because that's what they want to do also too. But to me, it's like that client that I service took me three years to get, not to have conversations with him for three years. It took me three years to go through different people 
that I build relationship with. So when I get in front of them, they're like, yeah, you know, just sign. Don't even worry about it. It's done. So the conversations are very fast, very smooth, and I don't have to prove who I am and what I do. So I feel like real estate, it's almost as close to it's the same thing. So you have to be able to build those relationships. But I got a couple of uh, my close friends that are in Florida. So you're going to be in competition with them. You better, you better, you better know the inventory better than them. Because I know they're they're killing it out there. They're there is room for people. everybody. That's the beauty of real estate. Everybody needs a home at some point. So there's room for everybody. There's I room agree. for everybody in the business. So if my last question: If somebody has not read the book Thinking Go Rich. Why should they go, in your opinion, go pick up the book and read? Okay. Um, so like I said before, the book reinforced the stuff that I already knew, but I wasn't, I wasn't putting it into work, right? So I think picking up the book and reading it will, will sort of reinforce all those things that you see, Gary Vee, you know, everybody posts so, so much motivational content. Um, and it all sort of comes from there, you know, it originates from a book like Think and Grow Rich. So if you, you have these sort of thoughts, you you want to focus on self growth, you want to focus on, on uh, just excelling yourself emotionally, um, it, that book will reinforce everything you need to do. And like I said, I already knew those things, but they're put, you know, into plain English. I, I didn't actually read the book. I heard it. I do audiobooks. As a realtor, I'm driving a lot. So I just, every time I'm on my car, I play the, I play whatever book um, I'm on. And it's just, and, and, and to, I, sometimes I actually did it. I read it twice or heard it twice because it's, I rather listen to something like that. And then sometimes we forget, oh, you know, there's this and then there's that, that I, that I completely forgot about and you have it in the back of your head, you have it in the car, it reinforces you. And sometimes when I'm going through a tough time or, you know, a deal fell through, I'm not, you know, I'm relying back on my faith. I use the book like Think and Grow Rich to sort of put me right back on track. So I think that would be the reason why and why I recommend and I would tell somebody read the book. It's something that you already know, but it's being told from a second person you know, with their perspective and understanding. So it's a great book. I agree with that. It's a very, very powerful book. I think every entrepreneur that from, from the moment that you decide that you want to go in business for yourself, this should be the first thing that's going to be handed to you. They're like, you want to be in business? Read this book first. You, you, want, to, you want to quit your nine to five job? Read this book first. Like that should be the first medicine they prescribe to you. You should be like, read this book and that's it. I mean, I'm cool with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's all right, but you know, I'm a little bit biased towards it. I, I like thinking grow rich better. I think I actually think, would do thinking grow rich first and then rich dad poor dad. I would yeah. Thinking grow thinking grow rich, it's a lot more. You could use this book, in my opinion, for many, many aspects of your life. Not just in increasing your wealth. It could be for fitness, it could be for, for any aspect, relationship, building network, running your company, you know. Many, many aspects, but I, I know that you know the importance of it because you're busy. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this day uh, out of your busy you know, time being here with us. Um, hopefully, we'll do I a have lot to more. Cook. I have the turkey cooking. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, my wife and my daughter are going to be, we're, we're leaving for, for a gathering at 12. So I got two more hours in the office. I got to clean up a lot of stuff. So it's a, it's a good day to be in the office. I get a lot done because nobody's here. It's empty. I get the whole thing to myself. I get to work. So thank you so much for being here today. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you so talk much for having me. Take care. Bye. Bye.